We're all geared up. Let's go ahead and tear into this thing and see what kind of life it's lived. First thing we're going to do, get this head off. All right, are we ready for the big reveal? Well, I see something wrong already. There's a spacer that goes on each side on the studs to help locate this thing and center the engine. Oh, <laughs> and check out that head. That's seen better days. That might be destined to become a desk lamp or something. Now, the next thing we want to do on this engine is get into that power valve and get it all disconnected so we can get the cylinder off. Okay, let's dive into this power valve and get these screws off of here so we can access the power valve linkage itself. And there she is. Now the next step to get this thing disconnected, you're going to see there's a little hook in here and there's a little hole inside the cylinder. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it. Grab yourself some kind of little tool engage that hook and stick it right into that hole in the cylinder. That way, this thing's not going to move. Going to get that little nut off of there. And there's also a little spacer in here that my big fat fingers are having a problem with. All right, got that all off. Now, through the magic of video editing, we're going to transport to the other side of the workbench. Okay, now we're over here. We need to get this cover off. And voila, now we've got this off and we've got access to the other side of the power valve. Now, as long as that tool is still in place, we can do this next step. There's a little four millimeter hex head screw in there that holds both halves together. And with this, with this bolt out, you can just get it in there and get a hold of this power valve, pull it right out. There's the first half of our power. Oh my God, that's nasty. That needs to be cleaned. Now we can come back over to the original side, disengage the tool, and we can pop this linkage right off of there and lay it to the side. Now there's a little thrust plate in there helping to hold this side on. And out she comes. Now we can just grab a hold of that and pop it right out. And that's just as dirty and carboned up as the other side. Ew. I'm going to get these cylinder base nuts off and I've already loosened these off camera so I don't have to bore the hell out of you guys. But one thing that I did want to notice on here is the previous owner to this when he did his full resto decided he was going to paint this engine after everything was completely put together. Well, that meant a lot of the nuts are, are painted on. Great Loctite by the way, but really stinks to try and get it off. Well, instead of busting your ass trying to get it off, Get yourself a can of acetone and a rag. You're going to soak that down a few times, let it sit a little bit. It's actually going to eat through the paint and make it a lot easier to get these bolts off of here. So now we got the bolts off. It's a matter of just simply playing with the jug and lifting it straight up and taking off the last bolt so you can get it off. And there it is. Now we've got our piston up here. Now how this is held in, on both sides of the piston, there's a, a little hole here and there's a pin in there that holds that to the connecting rod and that's held in by two little C-clips. You need to get this pin out of here and trust me, it's not as easy as Rocky Mountain makes it look. <laughs> and we're going to make ourselves a little puller and all you got to do is tighten that and it's going to start pulling that out of there for you. It's going to make life a lot easier. Okay, and you're going to simply Tighten this bolt up, which is going to draw this whole thing into you. And it's going to pull that piston pin out. Ha <laughs> ha! More power! Oh, 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 oh. If the pin is out enough that you can pull the piston off. Two things you definitely want to check for when you have this done is you're going to check for side to side movement and you're going to check for up and down. There's absolutely nothing up and down on this thing. So to check for the side to side, we're going to grab our trusty feeler gauges. You're going to want to take a look at your manual or look it up online. The specs on this engine are 0.25 millimeters to 0.75 millimeters. 0.23 millimeter, which should easily slide in, and it does. Now, we're going to jump to the, the spectrum with a 0.75 millimeter feeler gauge, and this should not go in. 
And look at that, it doesn't go in. So we know our crank is good. Now, we're gonna take this cylinder and the piston up to my buddy Dave and have him give us our or his professional opinion on it. Now, if you do wanna actually measure your cylinder, you're gonna need a set of these telescopic bore gauges. Now what they do, when you turn the handle up here, the ends pop out. So that'll make it easy to get into your cylinder. And you turn the handle, they pop out, you tighten it back up again, pull it back out, grab yourself a micrometer, and you're gonna wanna measure your gauge. 68.8. Now, when you do this, you're gonna to wanna to take two measurements at least two times in the cylinder, three is preferred. You're gonna to wanna to do it at the top this way and then 90 degrees to that. Go down a little bit further, same thing, and go down to the bottom and same thing. What you're checking is you wanna check that the cylinder's not tapered, so in other words, it doesn't look like an ice cream cone, and you wanna make sure that this thing's perfectly round and not oblong because then your piston's gonna end up slapping around in a cylinder. We're gonna get these power valves cleaned off because, oh my God, that's carbon from 1988 on there. <laughs> that's the year I graduated high school. That's all there is to taking the top end of your motor apart. Make sure you tune in for the next video. We're gonna be splitting these cases and inspecting everything inside. And until then, never quit playing in the dirt. <laughs>